The Stephen A. Coons Award is given in odd numbered years to an individual to honor that person's lifetime achievement and contribution to computer graphics and interactive techniques. This year's Coons Award goes to Rob Cook for his pioneering technical contributions to rendering, especially to, to physically based reflectance models and distribution ray tracing, and for his enduring work on behalf of the SIGGRAPH community. In the early 1980s, Rob, with Ken Torrance, introduced the notion of the bidirectional reflectance distribution function to graphics, and the notion that the BRDFs for a wide class of materials could be approximated by a model with just a few parameters, parameters that could be measured in the lab. With the introduction of BRDFs, our notion of light in graphics changed from reflection to scattering, permanently altering the standards by which rendering was evaluated. These vases are the first picture made by using BRDFs and the first based on physical material measurements. By the way, both Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin have actually seen this image and verified that the lunar dust vase looks about right. <laughs> Not satisfied with introducing the idea of BRDFs, Rob also developed a practical method for describing scattering from surfaces, the notion of so-called procedural or programmable shading. With this new approach, not only were new materials easy to describe, but the spatial variation of reflectance properties became easy to encode as well. And even the geometry itself could be altered within a shader. This is the first picture Rob made using shade trees. The wood grain has a different reflectance factor from the non-grain part. The B is made of bronze, copper, and ivory. The shadow is done in a lighting shader, and the corners are beveled with displacement mats. This was also the first ever use of displacement maps. It didn't take long for the idea of programmable shaders to generate a lot of excitement. This Road to Point Reyes picture was on the inside cover of the 1983 SIGGRAPH proceedings. It was the first published image to use procedural shading. Procedural shading also became an integral part of RenderMan, which Rob developed along with Lauren Carpenter. Andre and Wally B was the first project to use RenderMan and John Lasseter's first project at Pixar. Rob also developed distribution ray tracing, one of the first Monte Carlo rendering techniques. The distributions in this case included both spatial and temporal components, enabling the production of spectacularly realistic images like Tom Porter's 1984. RenderMan also incorporated depth of field effects, the stained glass man sequence in the young Sherlock Holmes film in 1985 was the first use of synthetic depth of field in a movie, and also the first use of render man in any film. Rob also invented the percentage closer filter approach to shadow mapping, which was employed in making Pixar's Luxo Jr. When you consider all these accomplishments together, BRDFs, procedural shading, the development of render man, displacement maps, distribution ray tracing, you realize that graphics just wouldn't be where it is today without Rob. That goes for SIGGRAPH as an organization as well. Rob has worked tirelessly in both visible and invisible ways to keep SIGGRAPH alive and functioning as well as possible. A consummate diplomat, diplomat Rob has helped to advance the organization over and over again leading by example. Let me just finish with a little story. When I told a previous Computer Graphics Achievement Award winner that this year's list of award winners included Rob, he emailed back saying, hooray, Rob Cook is my hero and he's my inspiration for entering graphics in the first place. I think we all know just what he means. Please join me in recognizing 2009 Stephen A. Coons Award winner, Rob Cook. Thank you. Um, I want to start off by thanking my mom, and not just for being a chauffeur. She's here today, by the way. Um, I said not just for a chauffeur, which she did a lot of, but for responding to a little kid who asked things like, how does electricity get through the wire where there's no hole in it? Instead of uh, saying, shut up, she said, let's go find out. So thank you for your love and support, mom. Also to my dad who taught me to be fearless in taking things apart. I never did quite figure how to put them back together, which is why I didn't go into hardware. 
I went to Rocky Hill Elementary School, which was not a particularly good school in uh, East Tennessee, and I wasn't doing very well until fifth grade when, my, when Mrs. Sane recognized that the problem was I was bored, and so she taught me algebra in the back, and that kept me going until high school, um, which I went to one of the really good high schools there uh, and had the good fortune to have Mrs. Aislinger as my math teacher. She was a great math teacher and really changed my life. I then went to Duke with my uh, Dr. Hahn, my modern physics professor, and my uh, best friend and colleague there, Mark Gote, who went on to become a professor in gravitation. I ended up not knowing what I wanted to do, so I was biding my time programming computers and digital equipment. And um, fortunately, the only person at DEC who did graphics was in the office next door, and they wanted to go back to doing medical databases, so I volunteered to take their job. And uh, they said, he said, well, you've got to go to this conference called SIGGRAPH. So I did, and uh, I didn't work for DEC much longer, unfortunately, <laughs> after that for them. But I met uh, George Joblove, who introduced me and gave me the courage to go up and talk to Professor Don Greenberg. Don, um, I owe my career to you. You are a great mentor and have been a great friend. Thank you for your unwavering support. Also to my fellow students at uh, Cornell and especially to Mark Lavoy, who put up with so many dumb questions from me at the beginning and taught me uh, computer graphics. I found some of his diagrams the other day uh, from his one-on-one -on -one lessons and this is one on uh, filtering theory. I think that's the standard two-point Lavoie font there. Uh, with the first paper, I went down to Bell Labs to borrow Turner Whitted's done camera, which didn't work, but he diagnosed the problem, found a flaw in the design, redesigned it, and soldered in the new design in 45 minutes. I was in awe, but I'd learned soon that Turner Whitted knows more and admits it less than anyone else I know. So thank you, uh, Turner, for your help and encouragement and friendship through the years. At Cornell, um, uh, I met Ken Torrance, who uh, was unaware that Jim Blinn had used his, uh, his reflection model. And uh, it was a great collaboration, and he really taught me how to do science. From there, I went to Lucasfilm. And I want to really thank Jim Blinn not only for the Torrance Sparrow model, which I wouldn't have known about Ken Torrance otherwise, but also for quitting Lucasfilm and going back to JPL after four months, which opened up a slot that Albie Ray Smith hired me into. And I want to thank Albie for hiring me there and for leading the group. I also want to thank Ed Catmull, Ed, for um, you know, creating a magical place and for your leadership and support and friendship through the years. Uh, the the you know, Pixar wouldn't exist without you, and the field would not be the same. Thank you. And when I got there, I was the junior guy, but uh, Tom Duff, uh, Bill, Lauren, and Tom uh, made me feel welcome, even though I, uh, I was going asking a lot of dumb questions. And then to Eben, Sam, and um, David, who joined later and were great to work with. I want to especially thank. Um, uh, Rodney and Tom for their help with jitter and motion blur and most of all I want to thank Lauren Carpenter he is the best person I've ever known to go to with a half-baked idea he's relentlessly positive and constructive everything changed when John Lasseter joined I want to thank him and the other directors for their patience with all our buggy code and for making great movies thank you uh, to Steve Jobs who bought us there wouldn't be Pixar without his guidance and support to Al Barr and Jim Kajia for supporting me in my year at Caltech, to my co-authors throughout the years, much of this work is actually yours, to my current colleagues at Pixar Research and new colleagues at Disney Research. But most of all, I want to thank the people who worked on PR Man, um, starting with um, Pat Hanrahan, who designed the specification in the shading language, uh, to Tony Apodaca and Dana Batali, who led the team, and to everyone who's worked on it for taking my little program and making it real, thank you for making me look good. PR man would just be a footnote without you. And finally, I want to thank my wonderful son, Ben, who is also here with me today, 16. And most of all, to his mother and the love of my life, Mary Ann. Thank you for your support and for putting up with the quirks. And mostly, thank you for your love and being in my life. Thank you.